I'm hoping you all can see me. All right, Ghislaine, are you ready? Ghislaine, Ghislaine. Ay, 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 see, I double checked and I keep getting the ending of it wrong. Ghislaine, Ghislaine. Ghislaine, hello. Ay, 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 so everybody is having issues with um, YouTube today. Yeah, like over 278 Hundred thousand people are complaining about it right now. <laughs> okay, so I'm hoping what's going to happen, Ghislaine or Ghislaine, is no matter what happens for everybody watching right now, we will be able to continue our interview. I think my Streamyard will still be recording it, and then I can just upload it that way. Okay, whatever you know, what you're doing. <laughs> Well, <laughs> don't be so sure. <laughs> <laughs> so you have an accent. Would you like to tell us what that is? Sure. Uh, I was born in a small town named Asbestos in Quebec, Canada. And it's a very small town. I think they're like less than 5,000 people. And uh, very young, I started to move around and explore the world. and. And uh, yeah, it's from where I was born and raised is between Montreal and Quebec City. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's the, I think the same time and distance for me to go one way or the other, which is an hour and a half, you know. But yeah, it's where I'm from. But <coughs> I, I moved in US in 1997. Oh. And uh, I am still here, and uh, I am a, a citizen now. And uh, I'm lucky I have dual citizenship. I'm Canadian and American. So I guess I don't have to go back every six months. And uh, yeah, here I am. After all these years, I'm still in US. <laughs> no 180 days and then go, right? Yes, I don't have to do that anymore, you know. I'm here. I'm on this side right now for like two years or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> so you've lived in the U.S. since 1997, but you've been a nomad for two and a half years. What started your whole nomad life? Uh, when I was young, uh, I always, you know, dream about traveling and exploring things. And uh, I... The first time I saw an RV, I was very young, and uh, that fascinated me. And I said, that's it. And I was very, very young. And all my life, I was attracted to the nomad life. And, uh, but never there doing it and got into like the stick and bricks and the rat race and stuff like that and work many years in Montreal and after that I moved to Florida and uh, I did different jobs. I stay in Iowa, everywhere and I always been in back of my mind. And uh, I was living in Maine for 17 years at the end and uh, I was working. I had two good jobs and I was doing very well and I started to have pain. And um, it took like a year and a half for the doctors to find what I got and finally discover I didn't have any uh, cartilage between my vertebrae. And I got an emergency surgery like the day In your neck? Was, no cartilage in the... Yeah, I was about to paralyze from head down. When they cut me at the emergency that morning, they say, if somebody slap you in the back or you fall face first, you paralyze, not even your arms anymore, your head down. Well, and how I, did that go away? Working too hard. I've been working hard all my life, you know, I'm a hard worker. And uh, yeah, and this, what happened is they get me, they give me the surgery right away. And uh, now I have a middle plate, fake cartilage and screws in my neck. And uh, that changed my whole world. And uh, I was actually a gun inspector for Homeland Security. Oh. I was inspecting big guns for the Army, the Navy, and all that. And I was working in uh, Maine, General Dynamics, to say the name. And uh, I could not go back to work there because it's a physical job and this mm. and that. And uh, finally, I decided to retired if you want to say 
And, uh, but in my house in Maine, I had a beautiful place near the ocean. I, I was, I had a perfect setup, but you know what? I was lonely and, uh, I wanted to do something, you know, and I said, you know, when I, I pay my rent or I, I pay gas, you know, and mm -hmm. I, said, I have no kids. I have no spouse. I just have dogs. I said, they will follow. And it's what I did is, uh, I sold everything, gave everything away and uh, store some stuff at my parents' house in Canada and uh, decided that from now on, I'm going to look towards finding a good RV. And um, I looked for a while and I'd make my, my searches before my researches. I knew what I wanted and that what I didn't want it. Mm -hmm. uh, Killian, your phone is is bouncing a little bit. Yeah, it's okay, just a little me, rocky. Sorry, it's just I want to focus on you and not the movement. <laughs> you know what it is? It's what? Leila. It's my dog. She's under my my elbow and she's scratching. Oh. <laughs> well, is... pets are just like kids. Then, oh, <laughs> what a cute! She wanted to be on the live stream, mom. <laughs> so here that, I am. Here I am. That was Leila. <laughs> but, uh, yeah anyways uh, now I was convinced I wanted to do that and uh, I had it's a little fun story attached to my rig and I'm sure you're gonna like it uh, I had a, in Maine an old lady I met in my little village she was actually born and raised in Canada, too, not so far from where I was, and she was 86 years old. And her name was Georgette Gravel. She became my life mentor. And I adore that lady you cannot imagine. And uh, one day she told me, she said, Guylaine, I'm old, I'm going to die. And, uh, but one day, if you have a black chihuahua, which is my favorite breed, uh, you call the dog Georgette for me. I said, absolutely. Georgette. Georgette. Okay. And, like George, but Georgette. Okay. And anyway, when I got Leila with me, she was only fostering. I didn't dare changing her name and this and that. And uh, when I got my surgery, Georgette was still alive. She sent me flowers and I had them dried. And a few days before she died, I went to see her and I held her hand and I said, oh, you know, I'm going to love you and miss you forever. The flowers uh, you gave me, I dry. what do you want me to do with them? And she said, one day, if you really want something, you're going to go to that cross in Arthabasca, Victoria, near Victoriaville in Quebec, and you're going to put the flowers at the bottom of the cross, and you're going to ask me what you want. And over there, when I'm going to be in heaven, I'll be strong, and I'll be able to help you. Here I'm old and I'm dying, but believe me, ask me whatever you want after I pass. And uh, I believed it because I was so in love with her. Yeah. And uh, sure enough, the day then I was ready to buy, uh, I grabbed the flowers and I went all the way from Maine to Canada, put the oh. flowers at the bottom of the cross. Oh. With, I had my two dogs with me and I put the flowers and I look up the sky. I said, Georgette, if I'm really meant to have an RV and be a nomad, please give me a sign, okay? And I went back home the morning after six o'clock, RV trader was sending me an email. We found your RV and I'm sitting in it right now. So my, oh. RV, yeah, my RV's name is Georgette. Oh, I got a big sticker on my hood saying Georgette and it's in honor of my friend because that is so sweet. She was the first one I told about that dream about being a nomad and she was so about it georgette was born before her time mm -hmm. and i know if she was still alive i was she would be still around me you know but she was 86 years old and i have a picture of her here in my rig yeah and, uh, but yeah and uh i decided to go for the roots for uh, 66 oh yes and i did that the first year 
Wow. But, so what is it like being a solo female nomad? Like, I want to know the truth because it's something I want to do and I want to know what to expect. You know what? Believe in yourself. Don't be afraid. Unless your gut feeling say, no, don't go there, don't do that, stay away. Listen to yourself. But if it's legal, if it's feasible, and you can do it, go for it, you know, because uh, you learn stuff at school, but never what you learn on the road, <laughs> never, you know. Uh, I am fascinated with national parks and the national monuments. Uh, the the runes, the Mayan runes and stuff. They don't tell you about that. They don't talk about Mesa Verde in your books at school, you know? But, no, I didn't learn about any of those things. Oh, it's breathtaking. And to be on the road saved my life, really. Not that I was about to die, mm -hmm. but uh, it gave me a better life, if I would say it this way, you know? Um, I could not physically, I cannot work so hard anymore. And I have permanent ne nerve damage. So my left side is a little bit lazy. Mm -hmm. So it's difficult for me. I cannot lift or stuff like that. Physically, I cannot do nothing that I knew what to do all my life, you know. And uh, I didn't want to stay home and watch TV all day. That was not me. And I said, I have to do something. And um, eating the roll, I remember when I bought Georgette. Uh, that was quite an adventure. I was so sure in my heart, it's what I wanted to do. And uh, I went to buy her, and I sat with her, and I drove. I got her in Connecticut. And uh, I moved in at 2.30 in the morning, and <laughs> I was so excited. And I knew I could do that. And I, let, I took off with it, and right the first mile, I fell in confidence. I said, this is my baby, and we're going to go far. And uh, you, it's like I say, you go with your gut feeling. You don't go places. There's actually, there's a lot of application you can have on your phone, you know, GPS and this and that. The 66 is a whole application you follow step by step, and it makes you do the whole thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, very easy, you know, and uh, it's like following a recipe almost, you know, and uh, be safe. Don't like if you are, if you park, example, in a truck stop, uh, not that it's dangerous, you know, but there's more people there, you know, and more people you not going to see anymore, you know, it, you know, people come and go and don't. Just don't walk with your robe at 11 at night to walk with them, you know? <laughs> that's, that's, that's good advice. But if being a female, have you ever had men see that you're single and, and try to get a little too friendly? Yes, but it happens to any woman on the road or everybody. You know, I, I would say, the, I would say three-fourths of the nomads are single. Oh, and, okay. Yeah, it's a huge melting pot here. <laughs> There's people from all over, all ages. But the thing is, what is more dangerous, basically, is when you go from one place to the other and you go to a place you've never been. Uh, my situation is when I got on the road, I knew nobody. And after two and a half years, I know everybody. And so for me, it's my experience is very, very easy because I will write on Facebook that I'm heading to Leadville, Colorado, example. And okay. my phone go off the hook on people on Messenger. Hey, Guinan, I'm right here. Hey, hey, detour 50 miles, come over. You know, and I have so many options. And, uh, but, you know, you lock your door at night and stuff. And if you, it's a place you're not too safe, you know, don't go if you're afraid or go where you, you can hear your voice, like the neighbors, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I got a situation in Iowa. It's, it was the only time it happened to me. 
uh, I was in a rest area in uh, Wyoming, I believe, and I was heading to Montreal, Canada. And um, it was a rest area and it was a car and a truck sex, you know, parking lot. But behind the building, it was a big, big gravel backyard driveway. And me, like to park alone, I went there by myself. And it was right at the edge of a cow field. And I was, I would say, maybe 500 feet away from everybody else. And in the morning when I'm getting ready to hit the road, I hear an engine very, very nearby. And I said, you know, if he's here, he have no business to be here. Mm -hmm. And I, my blinds were all closed. I peeked and I saw a big tractor trailer. And... Um, I went in my front seat, got my phone, and with my elbow, I blew the horn. I pretended I recorded him, and I had my bottle of Raid wasp spray in my hand. Were you blocked in? No, he was next to me, but I wanted to make him understand that he need to go away. So what I did is I grabbed my phone, pretending I'm recording him. I'm mm -hmm. so nervous, I cannot find the button. <laughs> <laughs> and, okay. I know you, audience is pretty cool. I must admit, while holding my phone, I was doing a gesture with my middle finger. <laughs> you are a true Canadian woman. <laughs> you got it, girl. And with my elbow, I was blowing the horn. And I had, uh, I will show because I think it's important. I go get it for women nomads uh, to have that. And uh, all right. And you show that bottle to them. Uh, oh, wasp and hornet spray. Yes, this is the best weapon. And <laughs> I got a case of it. They were in clearance. I give some to all my friends. <laughs> that thing. <laughs> no, check this out. Mace will make a cloud. And more likely, you might have in your own eyes. That boy, that bad boy shoots 20 feet in a straight, mm -hmm. straight. And I tried, I put some cans outside and it knocks a can down. An It'll knock can. a can down? An empty can, but you know. See, I was told about using wasp spray and then other people are like, oh no, don't use that. But what you're saying is what the first person ever told me said. Maybe I will get some. Oh, can't hear you. You you accidentally muted yourself on the phone. When you sat it down, you bumped a button that would say mute or cam mic. While you're figuring that out, I'm not sure who's all there that can hear me. It looks like there is five people watching, but I don't know if everyone can hear. I got it now. You got it? Good. And while we are doing this, one of my moderators, Going Green Mom, is giving quick synopsis of the things that you're saying into the chat, because some of them can't, they can't see or hear us, but the chat is moving. Yeah. So she's giving them updates on what's going on in our conversation. Isn't that cute? Why? Oh, she it's because it. they can't hear or see us. Oh. Only a few can, the rest can't, because YouTube's having problems. Okay. Ah. Oh, well. But uh, no, anyways, like I say, woman, woman on the road, if you want to do it, if you feel in deep in your heart, don't listen to people say you cannot do it or do it. You know, mm -hmm. believe in yourself and said, I'm doing it. And uh, if you, you know, it's possible, but uh, it's the greatest experience you can do, you can have. It's fun. It's fun. <laughs> freedom well you know you were talking about how many people you met and i kind of got a kick out of it because you and i are facebook friends and i really got a kick out of the fact that you don't have a youtube channel but you are surrounded by people that have channels what is that like <laughs> they are everywhere and <laughs> you know what i like them i like and all my friends they have youtube channel channels uh they are very respectful they respect, you know, uh, they won't, if you say, hey, don't put that on, you know, or they will not. And uh, they, they don't, 
if they were like the clean channel, I like them channel. And this is why I became friends with them is because few of them actually, I was following them from Montreal oh. and I became them friends. What does that feel like? Uh, this is the greatest feeling. And now she's a good friend of mine, but uh, I was watching her, you know, because I was watching YouTubers also while I was getting ready in my two years, you know, to say, oh, what sort of rig I need or this and that, you know, and mm -hmm. I was, you know, and, uh, but I will never have a YouTube channel. No, no, it's too much work. You guys, my <laughs> hat goes to you. You know, and this is what my friends, the most popular friends, a phrase among my friends. Oh, see you later, guys. I have to go editing. They, they, you know, you have to do your things or downloading stuff. And you, it's a lot of work. I do have a work myself. And so what do you do for work on the road? Uh, I do jewelry. Uh, I started it... Um, when I got my surgery, uh, my friend's wife just passed away and he gave me her beads. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, became, I started to play with that. I said, oh, this is fun. This is fun. And uh, now it's, it's, it's like I said, you know, my work, my line of work are all physical. So for me, like I'm a chef also, I can go in a restaurant and work easy in the kitchen, but physically it is very demanding. And this is something it's hard for me to do now, but jewelry, mm -hmm. I can do it. And I just started an Etsy page and I'm working on it. But uh, the years before what I've, I was doing is I was selling in flea markets on my way. Like booking a table and setting yeah. all your wares out. How was yeah. that? I love that. I love people. And uh, I, I did it in Lake Havasu last month with my buddy over there. And uh, we, uh, we had a blast all day. And uh, it's you met people and they come and shop at your table. You met kids and uh, people, they ask me. And I even have on my table, I put my uh, junior ranger hat and I said, I'm junior ranger. I do national parks and more you buy my jewelry, more I'm traveling and people love it. And I got a man last year. He gave me $40 and I said, okay, pick yourself jewelry. He said, no, I just want to give you the money to put gas in your rig to keep traveling. Aww. I said, cool. <laughs> but I that like is so kind. I love people. I love to joke around with people, you know, and uh, I think that, and my dog also around the table attracts people. And, uh, but a day at the market is a fun day usually, you know? Yeah. So going by the chat, a lot of people still are having difficulties off and on with YouTube, but James can't, Catanese can see us and hear us. And he would like to know, what kind of RV do you have? What did you end up buying? Oh, I should pull up the pictures. Oh, yeah. I have a Class C, 25-foot Class C. Here I am on that picture in Lake Mead. Lake Mead? Yes. And uh, it, they call it uh, Government's Wash. And it's a free campground. It's BLM land. And this is one of the places I like to go and do jewelry. Because look at that view, you know? And mm -hmm. uh, Yeah. It's, wow. It's, it's about 30 minutes away from Las Vegas. Oh, okay. It's, now, being in a wash, isn't there certain things you have to watch for certain times a year in a wash? Uh, for sure, and if it rains, you stay away because it's where the water pretty much gather and drags everything. But snakes, let's, I gotta be honest, snakes are my biggest fear. Where are they when you're in a wash? Are they there? Uh, I wish I know, but they usually just show up for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There is some holes, you know. Sometimes said, okay, is it a snake hole? Is it a mouse hole? You never know. You know, I don't know enough. I'm not afraid of snakes or Scorpios. I saw a Scorpio last week, that beautiful thing. And a tarantulas, it doesn't 
scare me. I love to watch coyotes and uh, there's nothing that I would like more to grab a, a wild donkey and give him a big kiss. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm an animal lover. <laughs> Ooh, you're really dressed up here. What was going on? That was Slab City. The first year I was on the road. You're dressed uh, up like that for Slab City? Yeah, one night a year. And it's at the end of the season. Uh, it's at the beginning of April or end of March, something like that. <laughs> Pretty much the same. Uh, they do prom. And the slabbers and whoever left and the snowbirds like us, we dress up for that night. And we take pictures. And we have. I had a blast that night. I had so much fun. And... Uh, Yes, and it's only one night a, a year, then you dress up. But anyway, Slab City, I can dress that for breakfast and nobody will pay attention because... So is there a lot of people there? Like, is it safer when they have this celebration than it would normally be? Or is it just you're okay because you're in a group? To be in group when you're a snowbird is a good idea, you know. Personally, here again, I never had issues in Slab City. The first year I was there, I met some slabbers and I became good friends and uh, they're friends. So it's not ever. always all bad? It's not. It's oh. not, you know. Uh, and here again, it's like on the road, you know, uh, you go and you can guess people, the good and the bad, you know, and for sure parking groups and don't go there by yourself. And, uh, you know, there is different people, different cultures. Uh, it's like in town, basically. Slab City is 640 squares, acre square. So it's pretty spread out. And there is some areas that, you know, like they have like cafes and they have karaoke on Friday. These are the safe place to go, you know, and you met okay. good slabbers. I, you know, it's, it's, they are still there. Yeah, you know, if a person's never been there, so you get so much different information and sometimes you just don't know what, what's accurate. Yeah, you see, like, when I go now, I bring people with me. They ask me to come with me. Because me going there is like a family gathering, you know, a reunion. I see my, my buddies and and people stay with me. But even me, who knows what to do and not to do over there, I, you know, I keep to myself. And I know I visit, like, there's camps also. They are good places to hang out. But... There's nothing more magical than Slab City in the morning when they play acoustic music at the Oasis while you drink your coffee, you know? Oh, that's so cool. It's every morning. Mm. Aw, there's your little pumpkin. Yeah, this is Leila. We were at the Grand Canyon. Nice. Yeah, I love my baby girl. She's so cute. Now, where are you here? Um... Lake Mead. Oh, floating in the water. Was the water pretty warm compared to Canada? Uh, that is a reservoir. And so the water is fairly uh, clear and warm. Nice. Um, but, and it, that place is beautiful because there's so many birds and ducks flying around. And uh, yeah, it's a beautiful place. Awesome. I love this picture of you. I absolutely <laughs> love it. I love the way you're more in focus. And now is that one of your park ranger? Yeah, I'm a junior That's... ranger. Let me show you. I brought my hat nearby to show you. This is my hat. Oh, I got to make you bigger then for a minute. Hang on so we can see you better. Here we go. Here we go. These are all the national parks I went. Oh my goodness. I'm trying to get you here. There we go. That's better. Put your hat on again. Put it on. Oh, you so that's to? pins from every park you went, you bought and put yeah, on there? Yeah, I've been about 50 of them. I do all the, the Junior Ranger program. It's a kid's program, but I get away with it. And, <laughs> <laughs> the young at heart. Yeah, but now they do it for adults, you know, and they even have 
they even made Junior Ranger vest for adults now. This is brand. I got one for my birthday. Aww. Yeah, but I I love to do that. There's 408 tags to collect. I have about 47 of them, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have to do a lot of traveling, but no. And the guy was taking. He was a photographer. We were last year at Party Art. And uh, this guy is a photographer from Boston. I don't remember his name. Very nice guy. And uh, we start to talk. And uh, I told him I was a junior ranger. And he could not believe it. And he <laughs> said, this is for kids. I said, I am a junior ranger. And he said, prove it to me. And I went to get my hat. And I came out of my rig. And he said, look, let us me get my camera. It's too funny. <laughs> and yeah. that's where this picture came from then. Yeah, but this is my passion, you know, if, you know, this is what I really want to do. It's what I'm going to, I'm, I'm leaning towards more doing is like my Etsy business eventually will pick up and bring you on that. And I will make enough, the extra that I make monthly to be able to pay gas to go to the national parks, because this is really my thing. Yeah. Hey, okay, you mean? look a little crazy here. Crazy fun. Yeah. That, I'm opening the year 220. If oh, that I was in New Year's? Yeah, that was New Year's. It was midnight and I shoot the... If I knew that year would be so shitty, <laughs> I, I'm afraid people are going to blame me for that. What is that, like a flamethrower? It's not a flamethrower, they say on the box. My friend, oh, my is it one of those things made by David Dobrik? I don't know no, what it is. I've heard he uses it on his videos. I forget who makes it. I think my son was telling me about this once. It's actually called Not a Flamethrower. You got it. This is it. We. This is what we call it, the non-flamethrower. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so you're just walking around shooting it to bring in the new year? I had a blast. <laughs> oh my gosh. You look like you'd be the most fun ever to hang out with. I do have a lot of friends on the road. I do <laughs> I do laugh a lot. That is a fact, you know. Uh, I think all the, the funny people on the road are my friends. And uh, we got a lot of, we would sit an afternoon or, you know, like, an evening by the fire and somebody's going to start to say we laugh a lot this is a fact i can tell you that you know and uh, we all have different stories different lives different everything mm -hmm. but around the fire we all the same and uh, yeah okay i'm going to show the next picture now this is some of your jewelry yes this is that picture was taken was taken in Quartzsite. It's where I am right now. I am in Quartzsite, Arizona. Okay. Mm -mm. But uh, yeah, this is. I show you. I got some pieces here. Oh, we got a question again about your age. You're 53, correct? Yes, I am 53. I just got a birthday two weeks ago, and uh, my friend, my childhood friend. I'm friend with her for 47 years. Flew from Tampa to come celebrate with me. Aww. And uh, I was like, wow. And uh, I got, I picked her up at Flagstaff. We went to the Grand Canyon together in my rig, like Kelma and Louise. We had so much fun. <laughs> oh, I hope and, you didn't go over any cliffs. <laughs> no. And uh, the day of my birthday in the afternoon, I was at Cinder Hills around Flagstaff, and I saw Aja and all the tribe coming down, and she did a dance party for me with the speakers and everything. We danced the night away, all of us, in the middle and of the This was dessert. all for your birthday, so Aja threw you a party. Yeah, I was so impressed. I was, I could not believe it, you know, and... Uh, that's so we, sweet. Aja's pandemonium, correct? Yes, yes. Just for anybody that might not realize. I mean, she's yes. a fairly famous YouTuber. Great channel. Great channel. Yeah. Great dog also. Boo -boo. <laughs> <laughs> you are so darn cute. So tell me a little bit more about this jewelry. Uh, I show you. I have some piece in my hand if oh. you want to bring me back. Okay. 
look at what I did last week. They called them, oh, I don't know how to get myself on camera. Uh, moon rocks. You don't really see on camera, but they change colors all the time. It looks like they are battery operated, the beads. Uh, I'm trying to really? find, yeah, check this out. They change colors. They're wiggling. Yeah. When you Oh, I can see some there. Yeah. It's one of those things you have to see in person to truly appreciate. Yeah. A picture do not justify. And I have it in purple and uh, maybe in blue you see better. I got it in blue. Oh, yeah, I can see on a little. Yeah. It's what I do. And um, I do ankle bracelets. That is a big seller. You know, this is another one. But, and I do, like today I work on the men's collection because each time I make something for guys, it sells right away. This really? Is Amazingly, I didn't know, but it's a market for men, you know? And uh, I made some this afternoon. I have some on my webpage right now on my Etsy. And people click oh, on it. I don't mean to interrupt you. And we showed... We, t we talked about your RV, but what kind of RV is it again? Oh, sorry. It's a Ford uh, 350 Winnebago 25 foot Class C. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. There's sorry. so much stuff I want to like talk about stuff with you that I totally got sidetracked. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. You want to so, visit it? Pardon? You want to visit it? I can make you a tour. Yes. Look at that, you guys. For those that can watch live right now, thanks to the magic of YouTube, she's going to give us a tour inside her home live. I'm going to okay. make it. I'm going to make it all more. How do I do this? How do I make it more you? Let me turn the lights. There on. we go. And hello to all those that can actually see and hear us now. We've been recording when we started. We knew nobody could see us. <laughs> and now can they? Well, it looks like um, the people are commenting. Um, it shows me now that there's people in the chat, whereas before it wasn't. So, Okay, I don't see the chat. But... Yeah. Okay, ready for the big tour? I'm ready. Let's go outside and pretend we come in, okay? Okay, that's great. <laughs> okay. Like like you really do when you walk into someone's place for the first time. Yeah. This is dining room. Here. Okay. Sit for people. I have a garden. I don't know if you see. Okay, what all are you growing? A chive and uh rosemary? Rosemary and Her basil. Egg. I use it in my food all the time. Okay, this is dining room. And uh, here we have fridge and freezer. Oh, okay. You know, like that. <laughs> I and does like that, that run off propane and or power? Uh, yes, both. Okay. I have a switch. And you have pantry. A little bathroom sink. Mm-hmm bathroom now do you shower in it yeah you yeah. do and so how much water can you take with you uh i think i have like a 30 gallon tank i'm not sure i don't know these things i know <laughs> to, when to fill it and when to not use it too much and well that's yes. all you really need to know right you got it you know yeah this is my bedroom can you aim it down a little oh, okay Thank oh, you. Yeah. Here we go. If I go this way, can you see better? Yes. Okay. You got some pretty nice curtains on there, too. And oh, and a TV. Uh, Is that a TV I saw to the left? To the left, yes. I have a TV in my room. And uh, here, let me show you one of my favorite things in life. That okay. was when I bought my rig was very important. This is me. My little poodle who passed away four months ago. And look at my Layla. She's here. Oh, I don't want to lose you. Here we go. Aww. It's my okay, best friend. In, my friend Caroline in Canada. We're friends for like 30 years. And before I left, she made me that. 
And that oh. was very important for me to put it on the wall of my rig when I got it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Hey, here we are at, hold on, I have microwave. Do you use your microwave? Uh, you know, to melt butter. I'm not cooking in that. <laughs> <laughs> I know and, some people are, you know, they'll take their microwaves out or they're considering it because they don't use it as much as they thought they would. Yeah, me neither. I never use it. But no, and I will leave it there though. But yeah, microwave, I have a stove and an oven. I feel like the girls are the price is right. <laughs> <laughs> You're one of the show girls on the side. <laughs> Or Vanna on the Wheel of Fortune. I know. Should I start to clap back as I walk? <laughs> Kilen. Oh, I have kitchen. And I, I did my dishes before. Well, we appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the cab in the front where I drive. Let me try to find your light here. Okay. And this, this is the overhead, which I use as a... Uh, storage oh okay that could actually be used as a bed as well yes it's a uh, king size bed oh <laughs> well you got room for me in there yeah come over <laughs> and uh, this oh is... there's some comments in the chat saying how beautiful it is oh thank you guys and how beautiful that painting was and look at that beautiful lady here this is the Georgette, the one I named my rig after. I'm trying oh, to Oh, find... they gave you the sign. If anyone didn't hear that story at the very beginning of our live stream, when this is done, I highly recommend you take the time to go back. And it's kind of like, I don't know, the beginning, the roots to this whole adventure. <laughs> it so is. it'd be def definitely worthwhile for you guys to go back and see, because YouTube was having problems when we were having that discussion. Mm-hmm. Traveling but, Granny wants to know where now. Sorry, there's going to be some repetition because some people do have questions, Gilan, and sure. they weren't um, they weren't able to ask it before because of YouTube. So you are. They want to know where you are. So you're in Quartzsite for the winter. Yes, I am in Quartzsite right now. At, uh, you're from Quebec, Canada. Yes. And where do you usually spend your summers? Uh. This year, I didn't went back to Maine or Canada. It's too far. It's 3,000 miles. Mm -hmm. And um, that COVID thing also was changing a lot of things. Yes. And uh, this is the thing. I was supposed to work last summer. Last year, I went to visit a Crazy Horse Monument. Oh, I've been there. Yeah. And they offered me to be a tour guide last summer. Uh, French tour guide and English, I can do both tours. And they were like, all right. And uh, when I contacted them in February or whatever the COVID start, and they said, we're not going to open. Uh, you have to understand that all these tribes like the Navajo, uh, all the tribes around, I have a blank right now too. They were hit very bad with the COVID. For some mm -hmm. reason, the disease went straight on them and they lost a lot of mem tribe members with the covid and so a lot of uh, national parks some parks they were closed the parts they belong to the tribe uh, glacier example the east part of glacier was not open to the public this year because the covid mm -hmm. so when they finally i decided oh i'm not gonna go to south dakota and i start to travel around and Everywhere I was going did not hire because of the COVID thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Um, mm. But you would be so good, but like just your personality alone to be a tour guide, but also because you're bilingual and you someone was asking about the traveling back and forth, you have dual citizenship. Yes, they I would do. have missed that earlier. Let's go back and see what else I have for your pictures here. I like pictures. So I was social distancing before it was cool. I love your t-shirts. That was a Jackson Hole. Those are all antlers behind you, that wall. It is. There's four arches around the, that little park. And mm -hmm. uh, this is Jackson Hole, Wyoming. And uh, what a beautiful place. 
Wow. Yeah. Mm. <sighs> Where I am. This is pretty. It I reminds like it. me of Jasper. It's a uh, McDonald Lake in Mont Glacier, uh, in Glacier National Park. Mm. The day after, my little poodle fell on her head, and I had to say goodbye two days after. Oh. Yeah, that was sad, but yeah, that was beautiful. That lake. Mm-hmm. This is Willy. This is Willy Wonka. <laughs> Willy Wonka. Yeah. Gilet. Willy Wonka. <laughs> yeah. We were my friend and I. We were in Colorado, and we are actually doing beads. And uh, we look at the window. She, she said, "Gilen, there's a donkey outside." And sure enough, the lady had him and a horse, and she was bringing them to eat that shrub there. They love that stuff. Okay. And he was the coolest donkey ever. <laughs> he was giving kisses and all that. <laughs> You're so good with animals and stuff, too. I love animals. You see a random donkey hanging around outside, and you're up there taking pictures with it. <laughs> I love it. I have a collection of selfies with animals. You should see that. I think I have like 200 pictures with dogs and cats. and. Oh, whatever. that's wonderful. I'm an animal lover. Oh, look at that little sweater on her. It's, and you wait. got ears on yours, and she's got ears on hers. <laughs> <laughs> That was a surprise uh, snowstorm we had in Colorado. Oh, and this year? Yes, in September. Yeah, yeah, I saw a lot of pictures. That's crazy. That was, but that was fun, actually, you know. I it didn't Canadian. last long. No. Where, where are you here? Hmm, in a national park. That I remember, but I don't have my glasses on. And but this <laughs> one, I'm looking on my. There's head. like a rock or a brick wall or something behind you. I got it. Some kind of ruins. Hoof and weep. I think so. It's hoof and weep. Weep or weep. Yeah, I've been. Yeah. Okay. The, I like the ruins. The uh, the old dwellings from the Indians. They were there like seven, eight hundred years ago, like Mesa Verde is one of the best example or yeah, Navajo tribe. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I want to hear everything involved with this picture. It's the steampunk. Uh, this year, Aja was doing a party for her birthday and uh, we were asked to costume in steampunk. And I had no clue of steampunk. I'm an old girl. I don't know that stuff, you know? <laughs> and uh, I Google it and, you know, I'm artistic. So I went all over it. You know, I made my costume and uh, the hat on Leila's hat is Mumu's hat. We just borrow it for the picture. But uh, yeah, steampunk. That, that is my... so cute because everybody was dressed in that style. Like, talk about an extravagant themed party and it's like you wouldn't typically expect that of a nomadic group of people that was magical that was like this is all out that party i saw the other pictures that you had i was like yeah. that is so cool that was a party to remember you know and uh yeah that was fun we're all costume i think when just the fact to Ask people to costume, even just wearing a hat before a party, that changed the whole dynamic, you know? It, like, everybody has something in common now, you know? Now they can party, you know? Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's like a Halloween costume. You dance with perfect strangers dressed like Batman, and you have the time of your life, you know? Oh, I envy that so much. Oh, I can't wait till I can have those experiences. Oh, yeah, you're going to have fun, you know. There is, and this year, because of COVID, for sure, we're going to be very affected, you know, for the big parties. Uh, they're not going to happen. The big gathering we had, and uh, it's not going to happen this year. But we're still going to meet each other, you know. But it's it's very 
it's that's scary, but I don't know how to explain that with that COVID thing. Mm. Do you feel well? Do you feel more threatened by it being a nomad than if you were in sticks and bricks? Okay, to be honest with you, I don't watch TV news and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So me, my lifestyle, who I spend most of my time with friends or a lot by myself. I like to park by myself for a few days once in a while, you know. So if I didn't see people with masks and them face and you never told me that was that, I would never knew. <laughs> I don't watch TV and I haven't watched TV for many, many years. I have no clue what's going on. You know, you know what? that must be so freeing too. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Kathleen Klein says steampunk. Steve should see this. Has he seen you guys all dressed up? Do you know him? Who's one? I don't know. Steampunk any. Steve? He has a bus. Yeah, I think he's with me on my Facebook or something. Or I saw his name before. Steampunk Steve, I saw him before. Yeah, yeah. I've I've interviewed him before. He's funny. And he has the whole gear too. So it fits oh, yeah. in very well, Gilan. Awesome. Let me see. Is there more pictures? Oh, there's the full outfit. Dang, you don't look 53. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Oh, Smokey the Bear is wearing a mask. Now that's how you know when to put a mask on. <laughs> this is another thing. I love Smokey the Bear. I like to take pictures with Smokey. And uh, I even went to his birthday party in South Dakota. Seriously, you know, I got a piece of cake <laughs> and uh, stuff like that, you know. And I joke with people. I said, you know, there's one. <laughs> I, I just found out it was more than one Smokey, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Because I, I like to joke with people and make them believe then I believe there's only one, you know, like Santa Claus, you know. <laughs> but I have a lot of pictures with Smokey. Everywhere, wherever I see him, I want a picture with him. Aww. And, yeah. That is so cute. I think that's all I had for pictures. Well, you know what? So far, we, are, we, we were like three minutes shy of an hour and we've had... We've had the tour of your rig live, which is fantastic. We got all through those pictures. We've got some great stories, but I want to know more about your jewelry. Now I saw Going Green Mom. She found your Etsy page and posted the link in the chat. Oh. She's amazing. Um, so how, what, what's involved for you to sell on Etsy when you're on the road? How does that work? Um, I did jewelry in a lot for the last two three years so i have a huge inventory right now i don't have to make them i'm just selling what i got which i have mm -hmm. but i still make some i made some th this afternoon uh you know i take pictures i go outside on the rocks and uh, i take different pictures of them on different setup outside and after you post, you find a story, you find a name for each piece, which is when it's fun when you have with friends and they drink wine and they give you mm -hmm. all kinds of cool names for my jewelry. And, uh, and after that, you post it. And when people buy, uh, I, I have a bright pink envelope and everything. And I post within a day. Uh, this is why I always go in a place I can have access to internet and I'm within 20 miles from a post office. But, uh, yeah, I, and I do, if, like I do markets, if I encounter some markets and like I did at Lake Avesu the other day. And, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. I noticed some people in our chat were saying they wanted to see the pictures and I thought I was showing them all. Can you guys see them now? I'll scroll back through them one more time because I can, see, it looks to me like it's up on the screen. Does it look like that to you? Yeah, it, it, is it looks like it on my phone too. But again, YouTube's been glitching so much. <laughs> so while Smoky. we're talking here, I'll just keep showing pictures a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, you only have so much room in your rig. Do you keep very much for supplies or where do you get it from? Uh, I, uh, where I'm sitting right now, uh, it's all beads. And I would say I, I easily have a, like a thousand dollars worth of beads. 
And uh, I got some people, they start to do that. They didn't like it. They gave me, if it was something I like, I kept some. I don't do plastic. I don't work with plastic at all. I just do with glass beads. And, oh, nice. Uh, and right now, and plus I'm in Quad Side, the biggest bead store in the world is right here in town. So, I, but here in, I don't need right now. I have so much bead ahead of me. But uh, otherwise, you can order on eBay because you can receive your mail on, on the road. You know, some people have questions about that. But no, you, if you go for a while, you want to see one example, I would say Hurricane Utah, uh, you just write them address and you go on eBay and you buy the beads and you say Guilain, Plant. Uh, general delivery and you give the post office address and it's going to land right there. Oh. Yeah, and so if I need something on the road, like today I lost, I have a tag I, I, I put on each piece of jewelry, I don't know if you see it, it's a little hard, say made with love. Ah. Uh, I need to find the right way to do that. Here we go. Oh, I, <laughs> ah. You're like I am when I'm trying to show it on the camera because everything's reversed. Yeah, no, this is why. Anyway, I have a little heart on each piece of piece of jewelry, and uh, I ordered some today, and they're gonna show up here in Quadside. Nice. Mm. But yeah, the wa the weather is a little bit cold. By the way, people think we are in Arizona and short, and no, it's a little bit nippy today. What's the temperature? Uh, I don't know, but it was like in the 60s and it got like in the 40s at night. Oh, so it gets pretty cool at night. Does it do that all winter? Uh, you know, I'm here for two winters now and it's my third one, my third year I'm starting and I'm cold. And uh, I'm going to go more likely in Texas this winter. After all the boondocking bash in three weeks and after it's going to be schooly palooza and all that after that i'm going to head towards uh, texas it's uh, warmer pa there yes padre island i'm going to be there for a while and after next summer i don't know what i'm going to do yeah but you're flying by the seat of your pants so you can you can go wherever you like you know the road is there for me, you know, and uh, I never really plan, except like this in the winter, because we have like gathering organized, you know, and we know like a month ahead what we're going to do. Otherwise, I never really know like mm -hmm. a week before where I'm going to be, you know, if it feels good and it's fun, let's do it, you know, and we go. So do you do a lot of caravanning? No. I know a lot of people uh you see i park here two days ago and uh, they all show up around my buddies because it's like this time of the year it's the best time of the year it's like family reunion because people they were gone this summer minnesota to see the family in new york and this and that they are coming back for the winter so every day we met our buddies from last year like I have some around me today, you know, I have a few of my buddies, but if I need to go somewhere, I don't like to be like four or five rigs in a row. I don't like to do that. Some no. people do. Some people won't travel alone. I like to do both. I'm, I don't get lonely. So I can do my national parks by myself and this and that, but some people, they rather being together, a bunch of them. And uh, it depends how you feel, you know? But mm -hmm. if you go on the road, expect to be alone sometimes, you know? There's things gonna happen. You, example, if you travel with someone and that someone has something to do and it's back home, you, you don't go, you, you know, you're gonna have to be alone for, sometimes to be on your own. There's mm. something, is it the dog, is something moving or rubbing a little bit close to the phone? No, it's me. That was me doing that this time. I'm okay. I still moving now. Do I you was... know? It's good now. Frugal RV gal, she says, I hope to see you soon, Gailen. 
Yes. Gilen. So this is someone that you know as well? Gilen. She did an interview for me while I was in Colorado. And uh, we were stuck, four of us, in that snowstorm in Colorado. Mm -hmm. And one day I go outside with them. We all decide to dress up. And uh, I start to make snowballs and throw them. And they gang up against me. Well, that you deserve it if you start it. Yeah, no, but two against me, you know. And that girl is from Texas. She never made a snowball in her life. And she <laughs> got me so many times, you know. <laughs> oh, that is so funny. That yeah, is that so funny. funny. Uh, Izzy is here too, and she is from Quebec as well. She's Ooh. out in uh, British Columbia right now. Who is there? The, um, I don't know how to say her first name officially. I call we call her Izzy. The, can you see that where I popped up a hello or hey there, everyone? I don't know if you know her yet. No, she's I don't. another Canadian. Yeah, hopefully they're gonna be able to come this year. This is starting to stress me out a little bit. Well, I don't think any of us are gonna be able to come. I mean, it's November and the borders are closed. It's not going to change. Numbers are going up everywhere in the world. Our numbers are the highest has ever been where I live. So until a vaccine comes, I don't see, I don't see it changing for this. I, I have friends. All they have in life is them RV. They don't have a house anymore. Where are they going to go? You cannot stay in your RV in Quebec in the winter. You cannot stay in your rig. Even where you are, I don't, where you are you exactly? You stay I'm in South Saskatchewan. In Saskatchewan, can you stay in your RV in the winter? I have a house. Oh yeah, I have a house, but I have a house. But you homes. know what? I would have to have my diesel heater in there. When we hit, you and I know Canadian winters when it gets yeah. to January, February. I don't know. I I don't know. It's and anyone that has, for example, like yours. It's not going to be insulated well enough, no. even if they have insulation in it. No, and all the plumbing is in plastic, you know? It's going to freeze mm -hmm. and break. Yeah, but there are people that stay in Canada. It just seems like most of them go to Vancouver Island or somewhere in British Columbia where the temperatures are a little bit more moderate than the rest of Canada. But I got a bunch of my Canadian friends right now near the border in BC ready to cross if they say yes. And oh. they are stuck in the snow right now with them RVs. It's not, it's not cool, you know. I hope they, something's going to happen. I, don't, I wish them the best. And you know what? It's going to be boring without the Canadians with us here because they're fun <laughs> people, you know. And, uh, yeah, mm, hopefully, hopefully. The 21st of November, they're going to know. Uh, going green moms as vaccines are going into emergency approval by the end of the month. I know in Canada, there's actually negotiations going right now for, uh, who is going to produce the vaccines. They do have a system that's two shots, but nothing's guaranteed yet, but we do, they've acquired all the other supplies involved in vaccination that they'll need. They already have that. So I guess, I don't know, I guess if something happened, we could go, but I, I don't know. I think your friends in Canada are going to still be in the in Canada in the hardest part of winter. It's too bad. It's, it's sad. Well, now, unless they could fly out and come see you, but then how does a person afford to mm -hmm. to stay out there? Is what? So, like for example, myself, if I decided, Kate, okay, well, I'm I want to stay in Arizona this winter. Can't drive across. I'm going to fly. Well, then I have to find a place to stay. Yeah. Yeah. Or rent a, uh, or you can rent an RV, you know. You can rent an RV, but it would cost you an arm and a leg. And uh, Definitely out of my budget, Gillen. <laughs> I know. But, no, and the ones, the ones, example, you, example, my rig is paid for, but the example, if I had payments to do, and I cannot stay in it, and I have to rent an apartment, but I still have the payment to do, you know? So you rent an mm -hmm. apartment, plus the payment, plus uh, if you cannot ride it, 
you need to find a right to work if you have to work, you know, in Canada. It's crazy. It's, you have to rethink the, when you, this is my house. This is my car. And uh, if I lose that, what I'm doing, you know? Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Hopefully they will find a cure, whatever, you know? And it divides a lot of people, a lot of my friends. Yeah. Um, you and I had been doing a little bit of discussion before we started, but there seems to be so many things in the world right now that, that are dividing people. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, the politics, obviously. And um, it's sad to see your friends don't get along because they fight about a guy, and sorry for my French, that if Donald Trump or Biden, it's like I said to my friend today, if Biden or Trump see you on the sidewalk today, more likely he ain't going to give a shit about you. So why are you fighting with your friend for a guy who will not fight for you? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's difficult to see that. And also, uh, I have some friends, they don't believe in COVID and some people are petrified of it. So when you go in a gathering, okay, are we jumping on each other's neck or we bump elbows or we put a wall in between us or this is, yeah, yeah, yeah it's, you, and you, it's not something, you know, before we always said at, at the camp, the fire camp at night, uh, we don't talk about religion. We don't talk about politics, but now I would say don't talk, the talk, don't talk about COVID either. You know, it's going to be the mm -hmm. third sore subject here because I saw people getting into arguments for that. It's ridiculous, you know? Yeah. Mm. Amen, Frugal RV gal says. <laughs> it's so interesting. So many people are wanting to know what your YouTube channel is, but you don't have one and you said you have no desire to create one. No. But if you want to support Gilen, you can check out her Etsy store and you have a website as well. I'll have to get that from you again and put it in the description of this I video. Don't have, I don't have the website. Oh, you don't have the website? Yes. The Etsy page. I just have the Etsy page. Hey, check this out. I have even a bottle. Road Beats by Gillen. Here again, that thing again. Where you go. Nice. <laughs> and, so they should uh, be able to Google that. Road Beads by Gillen and Etsy. find it for you. Yeah. Do you know Wanna that. Wander? Yes. Yes. She's like, <laughs> Gillen, heart, heart, heart. <laughs> They want to know why do you not have a YouTube channel? <laughs> <laughs> because I can barely make a phone call out of my cell phone. I'm very zero with everything computer. This is why it took me so long to start a Etsy page. Uh, I can go on my Facebook, but, you know, I'm, I can barely serve the net. You know, I'm not, I'm old fashioned person. I'm old school. Mm -hmm. I can make you a pie without a recipe. I can do, I sew you a dress if you want. But all the technology, I'm not into that stuff really, you know. But I watch YouTube. I watch you guys. That I'm good at it. <laughs> but uh, don't ask me to do, like you showed me last week over the internet how to copy and paste. And maybe you were no offense number 10 showing me, you know. And I'm lucky I remember tonight, you know. <laughs> So I don't. I was a on. little surprised when you knew how to copy, but not to paste. <laughs> but you know what? That's a reality. We didn't grow up with this. Yeah, and you know, if in your life you're living it simple and you're doing the things you want to do, you don't really have a need. No, and I have so many friends around me. When I have an issue with my phone, I just hand my phone to one or the other say, hey, fix that for me. And they do it for me because they're good at it, you know? And mm -hmm. I don't mind to feed them after for that, but I cannot do it myself. <laughs> um, Going Green Mom posted your link again to the Etsy store. So anybody that's interested in, I don't care if you want to pop up for the second off the stream, like click that link if it takes off the stream, I don't know, but go ahead, check it, bookmark it, put it in your favorites, whatever you wanna do. Um, I have a, a highlighted comment. So Linda R says, you can have your ambulance shipped over. She had seen another YouTuber from Canada do it and I I didn't watch all that video, it was forwarded to me. What channel was that again, you guys? Cause that might be something your friends could look into. 
See, for me, I had taken the winter off unpaid and I'm still yes. paying all my other bills and I had wanted to come south. But to go without money, still have all my bills and then the restrictions going on. Yes. I'm like, I think I'm, I'm going to see if I can do it next year. Mm. Oh, you're going to have fun. For sure. You come with us that night when you come over. And we take you <laughs> Oh, my God. I'll go to Slab City with you. Oh, I'm such a chicken. Such a chicken. I give you a tour. <laughs> Actually, you're really friend, the only one I'd be willing to go with. <laughs> my friend, the one who commented earlier, I took her last year. And uh, one door, one, I don't remember her channel name, but uh, I took her last year and uh she had a good time i think you with me <laughs> <laughs> but uh no and uh, i was actually last year invited to sell my jewelry in front of salvation mountain that was quite an honor wow only certain people are allowed to no it's, you know it's like i didn't want to pause myself but i really wanted to try the, that spot you know in slap city you do pretty much whatever you want and it happened that the guy in working at the Salvation Mountain is a good friend of mine. I even camped with him in Montana and uh, asked him. And I said, hey, uh, I would like to sell my jewelry. And on his own, he said, hey, if you want to park in front of Salvation Mountain, give it a try. And uh, Nice. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Izzy says, thankfully, being with your legally married spouse is considered essential, but that's in Canada, not the U.S., because Izzy's gotten married, I believe, throughout the pandemic. Who's getting married? Uh, yeah. Izzy Straithart. She's Canadian, and she married her American fiancé, and I believe he can get into Canada now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can go to Canada myself. Oh, yeah, yeah. you can. You have dual citizenship. You yeah, can do can. whatever the heck you want, girl. Yeah, but uh, right now I don't feel, I don't, if I go there, I will have to quarantine for two weeks somewhere, you know, and uh, why would you go at this time of year to Canada? I know it's super cold, you know, yeah. forget it, forget it next year. You know, if some emergency happened over there, I, I would take the plane, leave mm -hmm. my gear in storage, take the plane, go and come back, you know, but I will never drive my rig at that time of the year over there. Mm -hmm. mm, it's too cold. So I know a lot of people missed the beginning of our interview, but I just want to throw it out there. If anybody has any questions for Gilan, now it oh so cute. Mm -hmm. Now would be the time to quickly post the question for her and then go back and watch the beginning of the interview. <laughs> 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 so that you can catch everything. It's some of those like that story about your friend, that was very touching. My very, friend was very very touching. Oh, your little sweetie wants some loving. This is Layla. Layla. Yeah, Layla is and so. A sleeper. Is she good with traveling everywhere? She loves that. My dog, everything with wheels, she loves it. The stroller and skateboard, everything at so and obviously in the RV, she's the queen here. And uh, she she rides. She's a front seat ri rider. She sits in the front seat, and mm -hmm. uh, she lost her best friend. Oh, and your other one. Passed. Yeah, and this one took it very, very hard to a point I was afraid she will not go through. She was so sad, but she she have a lot of dog friends on the road, mm -hmm. and um, she yeah, Layla. So people are wondering, how do you get dual citizenship? So you started uh, as a Canadian citizen. And then you moved to the U.S. and got citizenship there? Yeah. Uh, when in 1997, I was, when I was in Montreal, I was dating a guy from Florida. And I ended up marrying him. And I ended up being seven years with him. And oh. He did it, yes. And That's why you're so happy with being on your own. <laughs> and... Uh, it didn't work out. Um, nothing major. We knew we were not, we were like disconnecting, you know, mm, after seven yeah. years. And uh, we shook hands and uh, split stuff. And uh, I stay here and I'm 
but I was just on a spouse visa when it happens because we were dragging immigration because we keep moving for his job. It was difficult to, and um, anyway, and after after the divorce, I apply. Can you still hear me right now? Thrash, I'm available if you need oh, that. Oh, Oh, I could have talked to her for longer, but I guess sometimes I gotta give a person a break. Everything finds a way of showing us what's meant to be. She can't cross a border. She didn't use 180 days of dual citizenship. What? I don't really understand. I'm missing something in, in that, when I'm reading that. Kathleen, don't even get started. Don't even get started. I thought you had to give up citizenship and you got US, no. No. And, you know, I have some cousins that have dual citizenship as well, but they have, um, they're First Nations. So I don't know if that made a difference um, for them to cross whenever they want. I'm not really sure how that worked. Hang on. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. I thought we lost you for good. Yeah, but you're about to because my battery is like 3%. <laughs> okay, so you didn't have to give up your U.S. citizenship. No. Or you didn't have to give up your Canadian citizenship when you became American? No. Uh, in Canada, we have the umbrella law. They cannot ask us to surrender. And so, and plus, I made sure to request to save my Canadian citizenship. And it was granted to me. And uh, I got two passports, the American and the Canadian one. And uh, basically, when you cross the border, if I leave here, example, and I take the plane to go to Montreal or Europe, I can use either passports. But if I'm driving, my license on my RV is from Maine. So I need to have my American, American passport. One. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. But I can cross the border with an American passport, get to Montreal, take my Canadian passport, and go at Cuba. Because <laughs> <laughs> Cuba's very popular for the Canadians, and it's not as expensive as Mexico. No. And if you're going to Montreal, that is the cheapest area. Montreal and Ontario, like in Toronto, those are the cheapest places to fly out of to get to Cuba. Yeah, there's eight flights a day. I know I went twice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. I've only been to Cuba once so far, but COVID kind of got in the way of that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just too bad, the COVID, for the small business people. They're losing everything because of that. Oh, with the COVID, it says you can't go back and forth freely. Well, you like no. you said, you had to quarantine and I don't want to know that. that. Thank you for answering for me, Going Green Mom. What is Slab City? Karen doesn't know Slab City. The last free place on earth. Google it on YouTube. Yes, you're going to see some interesting stuff. You're going to watch some documentaries. It's totally going to keep your attention. And then you're going to go, she likes going there. She has fun going there. She dressed up like this one picture when she went there. Because <laughs> it's just so interesting to me. I got to find that picture again. Yeah, this is this is Gilan once a year at Slab City. I <laughs> would have never thought that was possible in this world. <laughs> Keelan, they're requesting cigars when you come back from Cuba. Ah, uh, no, I don't bring cigars. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, um, Paul Barger um, went to Slab City, so he does have some information on that. And, yeah, we have to go to Blind Views' um, channel to watch that interview. Blind Views interviewed me, and that came out yesterday, and Paul's interview came out today pretty good i felt very comfortable being interviewed have you been interviewed by a lot of youtubers yes i've been introduced for my business like have you been on a lot of people's youtube channels have uh, they I have on a lot of channels but you know because these are my friends or uh, like sometimes you will see me cooking on i'll just uh 
YouTube, uh, I said last week, she posted that when I cook something for her, uh, oh, you're going to see me passing by or dancing in the back. There's a party and stuff like that. The first time I really was on a YouTube channel, it was with Jana uh, doing that uh, uh, RV Frugal. Yeah. Oh, okay. If you click on her channel, um, you will see my interview. She go in her... All her Frugal things. RV go? Yeah. Uh, um, oh, Megan, can you drop the link for Frugal RV go, please? Okay, continue. <laughs> and uh, she, uh, she interviewed for my jewelry. We did a full interview with, together. And uh, the famous uh, snowball fight, I think she got like 27,000 views for that. Thing. Yeah, that was crazy. What? And you will see me with you. You can recognize me. I have my hat with my ears, my my bare <laughs> hat, and you will. There's like all these people saw me having my butt kicked on. <laughs> she says she loved that interview that's fantastic so anybody that hasn't checked out frugal rv gal because usually we have someone's youtube channel to go to after the interview check out frugal rv gal and definitely you guys go check out uh blind views as well i highly highly recommend watching his interviews particularly the one from yesterday because it's me <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Yeah. Up here, but all right. Are we at the end, my dear? Yeah, pretty much. I managed to charge my phone to put in the charger when I'm talking to you. But uh, yeah, I don't have the earbuds anymore. Okay. It's a well, struggle. Every much love with me is struggle. Gilan, much love. Thank you so much for coming on the channel today. Thank you for having me. Okay, which way I go? <laughs> you look good. No, it's all great. Uh, it's very thank you good. for having me. That was fun. And I'm glad you had a good time. You'll have to pop on one of our Saturday Night Lives sometime. Oh, I will. I will. And you have to come with us on the road. We are a bunch of girls here, you know, and uh, I actually do girls' night out when we have events. And uh, girls only at my in my RV, and uh, we serve cocktails, and after we go see the main camp. But yeah, my girls. The pre-party party. You got it. You got I, it. You know what, Gilan? I haven't done stuff like that since my early 20s. That sounds like so much fun. Oh, so much really? fun. And everybody's saying that you're awesome and Frugal RV Gal loves you. Traveling Granny says it's so wonderful to meet you. Um, Maggie says you're wonderful. Kathleen says it's wonderful to meet you. Aww. James really enjoyed our live. Izzy really enjoyed it as well. Yeah. Sweet. Thank you, everybody. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we'll see you. Take care. Okay. And don't forget to go see my... Oops. I bumped the button. Don't forget to see her Etsy page. So it's Road Beads by Guilain. So that's what you'll need to Google. If you can't remember, it has been listed through the chat. And... Um, I've really enjoyed this interview. I really wished YouTube wasn't having problems for the beginning of it, but she and I decided that we were just going to go through with it. And I'm going to pull it from StreamYard, which is my streaming tool, and I'm going to see if I can condense it a little and, and have the full interview that way so that you guys can watch it there. But at least you guys got to catch the end of it. You got to see some of her personality and what a wonderful person that she is. Oh, everybody's so great. All right, and because it is Remembrance Day, Veterans Day, I'm going to do this particular soap bed. Much love, everyone. Here in the U.S., we have almost 50,000 homeless veterans, half of which have disabilities. We can do better. Help Badge pay it forward to our vets by placing your order at HeroSoapCompany.com using coupon code BADGE at checkout. That's coupon code BADGE. By doing so, you'll be helping contribute to solutions that help our valued veterans. Help BADGE do what he does best. Help others. 
I believe in the soap. I've tried it. It works awesome. And that's why I'm doing this. And a quick last minute piece. Megan, going green mom, you have gone above and beyond tonight. I want everybody to check out Going Green Mom's channel. Megan, drop your link, please. Um, she was even, um, she because for a while she could hear the interview and other people in the chat couldn't because of the YouTube glitches. And she was summarizing what we were saying and putting in the chat for everyone. And thank you for everyone that stayed in the chat and would read our conversation from Megan. You guys are all so darn amazing. I am so lucky and so blessed by each and every one of you. But again, going green mom, Megan, please, please drop your link. She drops everybody else's. And my dear, you just went so far above and beyond. I couldn't have made it through the show today without you. Thank you so much.